reminding me to record. We had the word, uh, this word, B-A-S-T-A-R-D, and I'm going to replace that word with B. So I'm going to do that right now. You're going to see that happen. Uh -huh. Okay, good. And we also had uh, 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 the word B-I-T-C-H, and I'll uh, change that to B-B just for fun. Good. Um, so I just want you guys to remember uh, George was using these words or hearing these words, uh, and it was fun. It was just friendship. It was no problem, and guys do that, but it's between friends, so uh, we are not friends, <laughs> so I don't want you to use the language. Now, to be honest, if we only had a group of guys, I wouldn't care, but we have several, uh, well, two ladies, so I, I, we should be nice to the ladies. They probably don't like that language. Uh, what we're going to do is go, we're not going to play characters, sorry. We're going to play uh, one person, so this will be Bertha. I'm going to give this to Everton. I'll give this, these two to Francisco, and I'll give this, whoops, that's not, that's not good. I'll give this section here, maybe all of, up to here. I'll give that to George. So if we have a few people, I like to role play, but we have too many people, so we're going to give you little chunks, little pieces. So Berta, uh, please start us off. Okay, John Paul, I asked to them here this morning because I'm concerned. Concerned that tomorrow is perhaps the biggest race of your entire career. And the person with whom you have chosen to stay is uh Very good. Everton, the next two. What are you saying? I'm saying get the hell out of, out of there. Let's put you in a hotel. You'll be comfortable. You'll be near the starting line. And most importantly, you'll have a wake-up call, Jean-Paul. A wake-up call. Very nice. Let's go to Francisco. Wake-up call. <laughs> These people never fail. They sit in, in a room with a big clock all night long just waiting to make the call. Very nice. And George, give me up to uh, there, I guess. No, I will stay with Elaine. It would be rude. Hey, UPS. <laughs> hey, so how was the meeting? Great job. I want you to say uh, bees, and this one uh, for future, uh, sorry, say BBs. Okay, so bees and BBs uh, in the future. Sorry, guys, thanks. Uh, let's, these two for Jay. Actually, you know what, you know, George, George, you do these two too, George. You know, I really like to son of a BB. <laughs> son of a BBs. <laughs> oh, God. George is too good. Uh, Jay, this section here. Yeah. Same every day. <laughs> yeah, that's how they talk. You know, everyone is in the uh, B or uh, uh, son of a BB. Yeah, it's like a uh, boy that's another BB, but yeah, can I really hit ya? Really? <laughs> Very nice, you bad boys. Uh, keep, um, we're skipping Jonathan, we're going to Mikiko, uh, this section here. Yeah, yeah, that's how they talk in a major league. Oh, oh boy, hey. Keep going. How many, um, how many sweaters do you got on? Good, very I'm good. sorry. How many sweaters you got on? Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Mohammed, these two. Oh, four. Yeah, could I have a cup of tea while in hot? Well, keep going. Next one, too, Mohammed. What's going on? Very good. Let me go to... Rob is also here watching. Let me go to... Uh, go ahead, uh, Muhammad, this one too. I felt... Oh, screen is out. Yeah, it'll blink. 
I fell asleep in the hot tub and the heat pump broke. Wait, water went down to 58 degrees. I can't get my core temperature back up. Nice job. And Yuan Chao, I know you didn't study, but try it anyway. <gasps> Yuan Chao, you ah, your microphone is off, Yuan Chao. Make sure you click it to make it green. There you go. Okay, which one? The gray section. You call temperature. Yeah. You call temperature. He feel my hand. Uh, yeah, feel. Uh, I don't know this. Keep going. Don't be strong. Oh, baby, it's ice cold. <laughs> Very good. Nice job. Nice job, everybody. Okay, I'm gonna go back here uh, at the top and just hit a couple of pronunciation points with most of you. Mm, Bertha, you know what I want. Yep, this morning. Excellent job. The short eye, very good, very good. Do you know what I want here? Yep, tomorrow. Exactly. So your t was fine. It was the a, ah, ma, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Great job. Tomorrow. Do you know what I want here? Person. Yeah, that's right. Lots of people, not only Bertha, lots of people want to say pair, pair, and we don't want to do that. We want to keep that er person, person. And you know what I want here too, don't you? Yep, chosen. That's exactly right. So I don't want to say it, it's just a bad habit. I know, and that's, and that's why it's important to have this time to practice and to get coached, right? Exactly. Thank you. Absolutely. And most of you guys, I know, just like Berta, when you make a mistake, as soon as you do it, you know. Even like Makiko earlier, she knew. But it's too late, baby. It's too late. Let's go to our next victim. Everton, let me hear it. What are you saying? Much better. That R was a little weak before, and uh, that's what I wanted to hear. One more time. Uh, what are you, what what are you saying? What are you saying? What are you what are you saying? What are you? Give me more ooh. What are you? What are you saying? What are you What are you saying? Good, great job, very good. And let's let me hear this section too, please. Let me put you in a hotel. Good. Uh, mm, 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 mm. So we have a couple possible pronunciations here. Uh, we can say perfect pronunciation. Let's me. Go ahead. Let me. And then a stop sound. Let me. Let me. Great. And then we, many Americans will cancel the T. Let me. Let me. Perfect. And the same thing with put you. Let's, oh, there's three. Try it with me. Put you. Put you. Put you. Put you. Put you. Put you. Now, the question is, Everton, how many pronunciations for the word you? Three. Good. We got you, ya, ye, right? Yeah. And the most common is? Yeah. Good. In this sentence, is it going to be ye? Mm, I'm not sure because of the ink. Perfect. Which I'm... That's right. That's right. Because we have a vowel here, uh, this is going to influence the U. That's exactly right. So normally, put chin, put chin, no problem. You can do it. Put chin. If you do that, we kind of get a Y pronunciation, kind of get a Y. But many times, not always, but many times when we have a U U vowel with another vowel, we actually go put you in, and we get a W sound. And I can't remember what Jerry said, but uh, I would guess that he said put you in. Let me put you in a hotel. Let me put you in a hotel. More W. Let me put you in a hotel. Let me put you in a, let me put you in a hotel. That was good. Again, please. Let me put you in a Oh my God. Let me put you in a hotel. That was good. Yes, yes, yes. So don't you don't have to think win. 
But what I want you to think is you, okay? And that you, this is the natural W. Let me put you in a, let me put you in a. Let me put you in a. Obrigado. De nada. <laughs> I'll stop that stuff. Let me go to Jorge. Go for it, George. Oh, I'm sorry, Francisco. It's not George. I'm sorry. Francisco. These people never fail. Great job. Watch the TH. These people. These people. Great job. Let's do this. They sit in our room. Good. They sit in our room. Good. So, so we got a problem here. Uh, once again, we have three possibilities. Sit in. Sit in. Sit in. Sit in. Sit in. Sit in. Good. And the sit in, that's kind of a flap T. I think that's what Jerry said. They sit in a room. They sit in a room. That's pretty good. Pretty good. And keep going here. Next section. Be clock all night long. No, just up to clock. One more. With a big clock. Good. And then. All night long. That was terrible. <laughs> One more. All night long. Okay. So this vowel and this vowel uh, are generally the same. And they're the A-W all night all long. All night long. All night long. Oh, it's, it's really tough. I know. For Korean students, it's tough. So just go slow. All night long. All night long. Good. Let's get rid of night. All long. All long. That was good. Make it one sound. All long. All long. That's pretty good. I'll give you like a 85-90% on uh, doing a good job there. But the problem is we have night in the middle. So put your hands up here. All night long. All night long. From the beginning. All night long. All night, oh, all night, long. <laughs> it's not too bad. The problem is, Francisco, what I'm hearing is a bit of a or, or, and I want to avoid that. Now, some Americans and some parts of America will have that type. I think it's more common in Australia, maybe in the uh, UK too. Uh, but try and stick. Most Americans are going to have an aw ah or an ah. And awe is really going to be the more common one. But again, it depends on where you are in America. If you look at the dictionary, though, generally A-W is what they'll say. So it's a tough sound. I want you to keep working on it. And hey, Merry Christmas. Here's another one. Call. Call. Good. So all long call. All long call. 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 Sounds pretty good. Uh, let me break this. They sit in a room. They sit in a room with a big clock all night long just waiting to make that call. I broke it into five pieces. I want to hear each broken piece. Go for it, Francisco. Oh. They sit in a room with a big clock all night long. Just waiting to make that call. Not bad. Now put it together. They sit in a room with a big clock all night long. Just, to make, just waiting to make that call. It's okay. Your AW needs work. Uh, follow me with body language. And I know some people don't like body language. But if we focus on body language, it slows us down. In real life, I know it's different. But let, we're practicing. So... They sit in a room with a big clock, right? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> they sit in a room with a big clock all night long, just waiting to make that call. They sit in a room with a big clock all night, all night long, just waiting to make that call. Good. A-W. We're recording this, so I want you to listen to your A-W, okay? Okay. Yeah, great job, Francisco. Thank you. Who, who, who is this son of a... 
Sign up at Jules. <laughs> so, uh, I apologize. Ladies, close your ears. So, singular, son of a bitch. Plural, son of sons of bitches. Sons of bitches. Yeah. So, uh, actually in America, you will hear some people just say, uh, those sons of... So, yep. 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 <laughs> Mikiko, I'm all ears. <laughs> Uh, uh, Mr. Peterson, I got a, I'm sorry, I got a call right now. So, Merry Christmas to you and everybody. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you too, George. You Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. All right, I have to stop teasing him now. Uh, so, once again, everybody, uh, a singular, son of a, with no, just B-I-T-C-H, plural, son of a bitches, and sons of <laughs> bitches. So, listen carefully. I just, I'm pointing out grammar. Not to encourage you, but some of you will. Sons of bitches or son of uh, bitches. And actually, sons of bitches would be grammatically or semantic semantically more correct, but probably son of a bitches is more common. Anyway, FYI. Uh, who is this? Was that George too? Me, me. Okay, Jay, everyone's either a B. Everyone's either a B. Good, get your TH. Either a. Either a. Either a B. Good. Yes, better that you can do that. Everyone's either a B. Everyone either a B. Mm -mm. You skip the S, and I know in Southeast Asia, skipping the S is common. Everyone's either a B. Everyone's either a B. Good. And Jay, it's just it's oral practice. I I see your dictation. You do a great job with the dictation. It's just oral practice. So be strong. Everyone's either a B. Everyone's either a B. And let's go down. That son of a BB Boggs can really hit, huh? That's a number B. That's a number BB Bob. Can really hit huh? Okay, so we need to have some rhythm. We need to break it into a few pieces. So let's do this. That son of a BB Boggs. That's a number BB Boggs. Can really hit. Can really hit. Huh? Huh? Perfect. Now let's work on some pronunciation again. That son of a BB Boggs. That son of a BB Boggs. Good. And Boggs is actually A W Boggs. You did very well. Can really. Can can really. Good. So the word really, everybody. Uh, it's really tough, especially if you try a diphthong. Real, real. It gets really confusing. So there are two standard pronunciations. Re. Lee, and I want you to keep them separate. Really, really, which I prefer, but actually many Americans are going to say really, 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 even quicker like that. So I will accept both. Uh, I prefer you keep your E's a little stronger. Try it again, uh, Jay. Really, really, really. Really. That was, really. that was really good. Yeah, the Lee is much stronger. Good job. Can really hit. Can really hit. That son of a... Oops, I got to be careful. That son <laughs> of a BB Boggs can really hit, huh? That son of a BB Boggs can really hit, huh? So much better. So much better. Great job. Thank you, question. Who's this? Is that Makiko? Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's how they talk in the major league. That's how they talk in a major league. Good. Keep your THs. One more. That's how they talk in the major league. Great job. And who's this? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Say it again. How many sweaters you got on? Great. And what word are we missing? Have. 
Ah, I don't like have. Have is a, such a stupid word. Give me a stronger word. Do you got on? Yeah. How many sweaters do you got on? Now, actually, an English teacher would want to say, how many sweaters do you have on? They would probably want to say that. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. So, uh, we can also say, how many sweaters have you got on? We can say that, too. Is that? But I don't like the word have. Have is... Have is such a weak word. Uh, I, I prefer stronger, more meaningful verbs. Have is very proper, and especially the British people love to use the word have, and they're very nice, and they sound very, well, all their speech is mitigated. But, I'm just joking, um, I don't like have. Uh, it's not that I don't like have. Have, for daily English, for real Americans on the street, uh, you don't hear too much have. Okay, Mikiko? Yes. Hmm. Go just, ahead. Talk just to speaking, me. Speak, just like a um, speaking sentence because it's grammatically wrong. Just a speaking. Oh. What, what's grammatically wrong? Got. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, English teachers in high school hate got. They hate got. Um, in this sentence, an English teacher would probably say, how many sweaters are you wearing? Okay, this is what the English teacher would want you to say. But in America, uh, we like phrasal verbs. Uh, got on, have on, uh, we like those combinations, those phrasal verbs. And as you know, with Seinfeld, got is super common. This is a word everybody needs to get used to. Uh, if you want to speak daily American English. Does that make sense, Mikiko? Yes, yeah, so it sounds like more yes, stronger than have you got on? Or like, like, like Jerry was surprised to see his wool over wearing. So that sound, it sound just, sounds like surprise. Um, you mean without, with, with nothing here? Mm. Um, maybe. I don't think so. I think it's just uh, a habit. Uh, how many sweaters do you got on? How many sweaters you got on? How many sweaters have you got on? They're all the same, absolutely the same. It's just the way it came out. So do have or nothing, uh, it's going to be the same. Okay. 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 Thank you. You bet. Um... Okay, so, the yeah, I see Muhammad's question. We remember, guys, when we use uh, get and got for a simple definition, you know, uh, what is he? He is a pronoun, and she is a pronoun, okay? And what's the idea of a pronoun? They stand for something else. So he is actually Tom, and she is actually Sally. Well, get, got, this is Coach Shane's definition, is a proverb okay so in other words it replaces a verb so let me get you a coffee is what let me buy you a coffee bring you a coffee make you a coffee pour you a coffee any of those ver verbs uh, I got a present is what I received uh, a present so uh, in this case uh, get is used Oh, I can't spell it all. Received the present. Uh, get is used to replace a verb. So I like to call it a proverb. No other English teacher says that. It's kind of a crazy idea. But that's how it works. Not always. You're going to find situations where, for example, I've got to go. That's just emphasis. I have to go. I must go. They're all the same thing. Got is used to pick up the emphasis. Got. It sounds like a strong, tough word in that case. But I got you a coffee, you know, whatever. If it's at Starbucks, bought. If it's at home, poured. If you can smell it, uh, maybe you're brewing some new coffee, something like that. So that's how we use the word got. I've talked about that before, and especially with the 
uh, Monday lessons, pay attention to that stuff, okay? So when you see got or get, everybody, try and think, hmm, what's the proper verb? Usually in the explanation video, I talk about that. Let me go to Muhammad. Oh, four. Oh, four. Now, you have to go to prayer. Let's hurry up. Yeah, could I have a cup of tea? Yeah, could I have a cup of tea? A cup of tea? A cup of tea. Boiling hot? Boiling hot. Good job. Hot tub? Hot tub. Broke? Broke. And this is a schwa, d, degrees. Degrees. Go pray. I think you have to go to prayer, Muhammad. Yes, yes. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, I have to go. All right, let me go to Yuan, Yuan Chao. Yuan Chao, uh, say this word. Temperature. Good. So those Americans, you did a great job. We like to kind of change things around, and we say temp pr with a schwa and then a chur. Temperature. 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 Your core temperature. temperature. Yeah. Now say it. Temper temperature. Your your core temperature. Your core temperature. Your core temperature. Good. Now I want a little body language here. Here, feel my hand. Here, feel my hand. Good. Feel my, feel my. Feel my. Good. Keep that L feel a little my. stronger. Um, yeah. Do you know the light L and the dark L? Do you know the difference? Yeah. Okay, good. I prefer a light L. It's cleaner. Feel light. my hand. Okay. Feel my hand. Good. Feel my hand. Whew. Whew. Yeah. So this is an ex we call it an exclamatory remark, exclamatory remark. And when an American reads it, we understand it. And so very clearly. So when an American sees this in this sentence, uh, they're going to say it's like really hot or really cold or really heavy or really rough. There's something shocking. So whoo, 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 something like that. He does say foo. Foo, foo. So I wrote it like that. Um, and it's just showing surprise. Um, let me hear your pronunciation here. Is ice cold? Is ice cold? Good. And give me more. Uh, I, once again, it's the L. I'm hearing cold, cold, like this, like, cold. like Da Vinci. Is cold. ice cold? Good. It's cold. And stop, stop D. Yeah, stop D is good. Try this. Come on, chow. The, the cold, cold, cold. No, the cold, cold. <laughs> so here, let's concentrate on the uh, O-L. Why am I getting italics? I don't want to get more italics. I don't want italics. Make it bigger. So I want you to, to hear, uh, first of all, O, O, O. O, 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 more L. O, you'll get O, O, that's o. too much, that was good, O, O, good, Cole, Cole, good, that was really good, Cole, Cole, cold, cold, and then a stop D, cold, cold. More L. Cold. Cold. The cold cold. I'm sorry. I have to read. The cold code. The cold cold. Not bad. I'm st I am still want more L. Let's go back here. Uh, this son of a BB is ice cold. Ice cold. Good. Keep that L strong. The L is tough. And I'll tell you what. Uh... Yuan Chao, ice cold. It's light air or dark air. So I it's was just going to say, um, most Americans are going to use a dark L, okay? Mm -hmm. 
And but not every English speaker, uh, depending on where you are, code, the code, the code, the code. Uh, I think it's Irish people. They always use a light L, something like that. Uh, some people do use a light L. People, so my philosophy is people who are having a problem with L's, I prefer they focus more on the light L between the teeth just so they can hear it. It's easier to hear. The dark L sometimes gets lost. Uh, and the reason here, especially L and D, the dark L and the D are the same position. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. And that's where we can lose it. And if you said, it's cold outside, cold outside, what the hell do you mean? We, we really uh, might not understand, okay? Cold. Good. Cold out. You can see my tongue. Cold, cold out. Cold, cold. out. Right, so what, and that's what the sentence I'm giving you, it's easy, uh, cold outside, we can just say cold outside, so that's pretty easy, cold yeah. outside. Cold outside. That was really good, good job. Um, same as, uh, I think... Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Bertha. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, how are we doing on time? Not too bad. Let's let's go a little bit more here. No, we're doing too bad. Questions on Seinfeld. I'm going to take you to a different uh, assignment. Questions on Seinfeld. Questions. All right. I'm going to close this bad boy. Get rid of my face, too. Let's go to... Uh, we're going to do 372 and get rest before put to rest. Uh, again, I'm going to give you guys about two sentences each. Um, I try to keep it fair, but, you know, sometimes it gets a little bit long. I'm doing my best to keep it fair. How many we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, six guys, no problem. Yeah, this is going to be no problem. Again, let's go ahead and start with Berta, this section here. Go for it, please. All right. Uh, get rest before put to rest. It's the kind of close call a lot of drivers can relate to. A lack of sleep and suddenly eyelids get heavy and it's like you go into a fog. Oh, really nice. Good job. Everton. The decision to drive drowsy has haunted Karen Roberts for years. A new nursing school graduate, she hadn't slept in 24 hours when she got off her, Christ her Christmas shift at Cincinnati Ch Children's Hospital. Very nice. Francisco. Uh, on her way home, she fell asleep and crashed at this intersection suffering a severe brain injury. Her left side paralyzed. I was in a coma for nine days, and then I uh, almost in the hospital for two months. That was really good, Francisco. Very nice. Uh, Jay. Now, no result from triple A success. You always cover an accident dumps exponentially with which, with each hour up slips. A blood sleep while well, most of them is at least seven hours a night. More than a third of us don't get it. That was really good. A little too fast, but really nice, Jay. Let me go Thank to you. Mikiko. Drivers going on five to six hours of sleep are nearly twice as likely to crash on four to five hours for time four times more likely to crash. Less than four hours, the effects are similar to drunk driving. Eleven times more likely to crash. Very nice. And let's finish it up. Uh, Yuan Chao, this one right here. Uh, the trouble is many of us are sleeping deprived and just miss an hour or two on a single night. And the risk of having an accident carries 
dramatically. Nice. Right. Yeah, there you go. Good job. Good job. And once again, Yuan Chao, I know you did not study that lesson, correct? Yeah. Okay, you're do doing very good. Let me go back to Berta. This word, please. You can pronounce it uh, both ways, before or before. Yep. And uh, we can say three pronunciations, B, B, or B. I have heard all three, absolutely. Three? Okay. Yep. So once again, B, B, and even B. It depends, obviously, on where you live in the United States. And for you guys who are not in the United States, I always recommend proper pronunciation. But the fact is, you'll probably hear B even more. But yes, there are actually three uh, typical, I'll say, pronunciations of American. Do you remember the, how did they say it? You said B. Oh, okay. How about this one? Um, do we have a, the Z sound in close? Yep. Or that we do is? not. It's close call. Yeah. Is that a S sound or, or a Z sound? S sound. Okay. Close call. Close also, call. Good. Very good. Also, this is a, a, these words need to be tightly together. It's the kind of close call a lot of drivers can relate to. Go ahead. All right. Uh, it's the kind of close call a lot of drivers can relate to. Super. Lack. Bingo. You know it. Lack. Uh, one more question. And, and two, relate to. Uh, yep. Two is a uh, ooh sound. No? Can That's we... right. Yes, yes, yes. It's definitely going to be a ooh sound. Some people might say uh, a lot of drivers can relate to. It's possible to have a t, but I really doubt it. Um, just like if we end a word um, with, uh, with an H word or start a sentence with an H word, end a sentence or start a sentence with an H word, we keep the H. Uh, same thing with a t. Uh, the f usually the first and the last words of a sentence tend to be pronounced quite clearly. And in this case, t is correct. All right. Thank you. Everton, drowsy. Drowsy. Say it, my brother. The decision to, the decision to drive, okay. the decision to drive drowsy has haunted Karen Roberts. Good. Four years or for years? For for years. Good. That's right. If you guys say four, it's going to be confusing. Um, so I highly recommend that you stick to the schwa R for years. And also the intonation is going to generally be Ro Roberts for years. Roberts for years. One more time. Roberts for years. Everton? Roberts for years. Great. Is it graduate or graduate? Graduate. Yes. And the basic rule, if it's a noun, adjective, adverb, it's it. If it's a verb, it's eight, just like eight. Not always. Candidate and candidate both ways work. But in this word, this rule is a good one to stick to. I'm going to change it. And Everton, just repeat after me. A new nursing school student. A new nursing school a uh, new nursing school student. Good. And when the student is finished, a new nursing school graduate. A new nursing school graduate. 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 There you go. It got a little bit of a W there. Graduate. Graduate. Perfect job. Good job. And next is Francisco. This section right here. But on our way home. Great job. And you did a stop T, which is nice. Can you give me a flap T? But on our way home. That's not a flap T. But on. But on. But on our way but on, home. But on. But on. But on her way home. So. But on her way home. So we got two things I want you guys to recognize. But on her way home. And but. 
uh, on her way home. If we use a stop sound, and if we use a flat T, uh, stop sound, when we, why do we use a stop sound? We use stop sounds usually to emphasize and emphasize the word at the words after and sometimes the words before. So a stop sound, usually things are going to be very clear. When we use a flat T, things tend to be very fast, very casual. And then in that case, we're probably going to cancel the H. And you guys remember, Francisco, what are the seven H's? Oh, have we has had good? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He, her, him, his, his. had, has, yeah. have. That's right, yeah. the seven H's. And these are in the middle of a sentence, they tend to be canceled. So in this one, with stop sounds, but on her way home, but on her way home, we'll probably keep the H. But uh -huh. this one, with a flap sound, but on her way home, but on her way home, will probably cancel the H. So, you know, things get really flexible, okay? Okay, yeah. Let's go here. Do we keep the H or do we get rid of the H? Her, her yes. left side paralyzed. Yes, we want to keep the H uh, just like up here. I can't remember. Ah, yeah, the two. Uh, if we have an H word at the beginning, or at the end of a sentence, we want to keep the H. This is not a sentence, you know, it's a, it's a long hyphen. But anyway, yeah, we want to keep it. Good job. Her left side paralyzed. Her left side paralyzed. And keep the er, her, her left side. Her left side paralyzed. I'm hearing more of a hall. Watch me. Er. Or. Sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Birthday. Birthday. Uh, and what's this one? Her. Her. Yes, sir. Her birthday is the third. Yes, sir. Her birthday is so. That was terrible. Terrible. <laughs> yes, sir. Sorry. Her birthday is the third. Yes, sir. Her birthday is the third. Yes, so her birthday is the so. Much better. So all of those are the same pronunciation. Coincidentally, everything's an IR, but it doesn't have to be IRs. It can be ER, OR, anything actually. Okay? Yes. Next victim is Mikiko, right? No, J, J, J. Good job, J. I want you to slow down. So just repeat after me. New research from AAA. New research from AAA. Suggests. Suggests. Good. I'm going to change it here. So it's more of a, oops, a schwa G. Suggests. Suggests. Good. Suggests. So, what I'm hearing from you is, I'm not hearing the final S. That's a problem with a lot of students. The nice thing is, Jay, you're a new student, but do you know what the strong sounds are? Uh, S and S and L. Good. And the weak sounds are? T, T, S, D. Good. Uh, and it's easy to remember. Shane never lies. <laughs> Don't trust that. Okay? So, uh, the point is, when you have a strong sound, it can cancel the weak sound. So, you guys know international becomes international. Well, the N is the strong, the T is the weak. Uh, here, we got S, S, and those S's are strong. We can actually get rid of the T. So, let's do this. Suggests your risk. Suggest your risk. It sounds much better. One more time. Suggest your risk. Suggest your risk. Good. Now, if this were perf, my speaking class, 
I would not accept it. I want you, I would want you to keep everything. Try and keep it. Suggests your risk. Suggests your risk. Not too bad. Each hour. Each hour. So, let's do this. Um, uh, So that, so this one, shower. 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 Eat shower. Eat shower. That's better, that's better. The CH and the SH, the difference is uh, the SH can go forever. Shh. Say it. Good. The CH, when we do the CH, these are your upper teeth, these are your lower teeth, and your tongue goes right to this position. It pushes up there and poof, it pops up. Chower, chower. Chower. Eat chower. Eat chower. Perfect job, great job, very good. Oh, you give me, you make me feel really good. With each, well, I'm sorry. With each hour of lost sleep. With each, with each hour of lost sleep. Good. So once again here, lost sleep, lost sleep, lost sleep. Canceling the T is easy, right? S S. We can cancel it. We can do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here too. Let's cancel the T. Most adults need. Most. Most adults need. Get keep the S. Most adults need. Most adults need. Good. Needs. That was really good. Now, we can cancel the T if we're speaking fast. Well, most adults need. That sounds fine. But when we go slow, we need to keep the T's. Most adults need. Most most adults need. Most adults need. Most adults need. Good. Sneed. 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 Smile. Sneed. Most adults need. Most adults need. That was really good. It really was good. Keep practicing. STS, uh, very difficult sound. Let's do this one. More than more than good and of course like i've said many times it sounds more like then when we say it fast more than a third more than a third great job good job jay Thank you. now i go to mikiko give me a w so we got a go and then an ing we need a w to link those two vowels going Drivers going on five to six hours. Drivers going on five to six hours. Likely to crash. Likely to crash. Great job. This again here. The effect. Don't worry, gato. And. Let me catch Michiko. Let me go to Yuan Chao. Yuan Chao. Many of us. He's falling asleep. No. Many of us. Oh, I can't hear you, Yuan Chao. I'm, I'm not seeing. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, let's do it again. Many of us. M many of us. More V. Many of us. M many of us. Of us. Of us. Good. Even more. Let's make the V really long. Of us. Of uh, us. <laughs> no. Longer. Uh, Victory. Of uh, 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 us. Good. Let's do this. Um, 
I can't think. My my brain is really bad today. Let's do. I want to do an F. Off on. Off on. Make the F longer. Off on. Off on. Good. So, the the difference of the F and the V is vibration. Generally, let's try that. Of us. Of us. That sounded much better. Again, off on. Off on. Faster. Off on. Good. Off on. Off on. Off on. Of us. Of us. Mm -mm. Of us. Uh, of us. Better. Many of us are sleep deprived. Many of us are sleeping de deprived. 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 Good, good. Your V is uh, not your friend. Watch your V's, okay? Mm -hmm. Just missing an hour or two. Just missing an hour or two. Good. And the word and, most Americans say it like and, like engine. So, just missing an hour or two. Just missing an hour or two. Very good. Having an accident. Having an accident. An engine, an accident. An accident. Good. Put it together. An act. An act. An accident. An accident. Having an accident. Having, a, having an accident. Terrible. <laughs> having, <laughs> having an accident. Having an accident. Good. Can rise dramatically. Can rise dramatically. Super. Very good. Good job, young child. Questions. We're going to stop right there. I do. I do have a question. I'm ready, Mickey. I do have a question. Thank you. Uh, why there's a that that kind of class call? Why it's not a kind of class call? And I want to see the difference. Where was it? It's the very first sentence. It's a it's that kind of class call. Ah ah okay. It's the kind of. Mm. Sorry. So the question is uh or the, right? Yes. And a difference. Yep. So it's a kind of close call. In this situation, uh, let's change close call. It's a, uh, we're just going to change it to situation, make it easier. It's the kind of situation. It's a kind of situation. It's the kind of situation we all know or we are familiar with. It's a kind of situation you might not know is the difference, okay? So, so Mikiko, do you drive? Yes. Did you ever? Oh, it's time. <laughs> So, so, whether you're American, whether you're Canadian, whether you're Japanese, Brazilian, whatever, we all have that experience, right? Mm -hmm. So, the. It's the kind of situation we all know, okay? okay. But, for okay. example, mm -hmm. let, let, let me change it. Um, Shane, what is eating sushi like? It's a kind of situation where you're eating something soft and chewy. So if somebody is not familiar with it, then we would say it's a kind of situation and explain, okay? Yes. Now. Thank you very much. Pronunciation is a good one. It's the kind, 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 it's the kind. They're really different. But I know for many of you, it's really similar. What I'm doing is I'm using the S, SNL, DTH, the strong S. And in the lesson, I talk about this. Uh, these THs, T and TH, can actually, it's possible to cancel. 
somebody's talking really fast. It's the kind of situation. It's the kind of situation. It's the, it's the, it's the. So I'm trying to say the TH, but you just don't hear it. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the. And the faster you say it, the S is strong. Down here, it's much easier. It's a, it's a, it's a, eh. So even the S is gone there. And the T, the S kills the T. We can cancel the T. And we get is, a, is, a. here, is, a. there's, the S is basically longer. Okay? I know it's fun. Perfect, in a perfect world, it's the, it's a. That's a beautiful world. No other questions? What is core temperature? The inside, the deep inside. So, okay. um, if you, do you know what hypothermia is? No. Hypothermia is right now where I live, the temperature is minus 22 Celsius, okay? Okay. Is that nice and cold? Very cold. So if I go outside right now without a jacket, probably after five minutes, uh, so for one minute, I'm cold. Woo! I come inside, I'm okay. You know, after, so I go outside one minute, I come inside one minute, oh, I'm okay. Do you understand? Yes. But if I go outside five minutes, I come inside five minutes, still, because my core temperature, the inside, all the way to the inside gets really cold. And that's called hypothermia. So if somebody has hypothermia, many times they need to go to the hospital. You don't have to, but you need to be, you need lots of blankets and it needs to be very warm. So if your core temperature goes down, that's not good. And the same thing, if you're sick, like a baby gets really sick and they get a fever, their core temperature is very high and that can be dangerous too. So everybody have different core temperature? Uh, scientifically, the core temperature of a human is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And what is it, 42, 41? Who knows? Come on. Nobody knows? 30. Is it 38? 38. 38.2? Yes. The, uh, 30, 37. <laughs> okay, yeah. uh, as I understand, 36.5. 30, okay, so I got everybody. 36, 37.5, thank you. Something like that. So evidently, the core temperature should be, you know, 36, 36.5, 37, 37.5. That, that should be the core temperature, uh, but it can get really, it can get lower, it can get higher. Okay? Okay. Many different numbers. Thank you, Donna. Thank That's you. one thing. No. The second phrase. Yes. No. <laughs> the second phrase. The last part. The second phrase. The last part. Give me the word. The, yeah, on five, to, four to five hours. Four, oish. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. The uh, I think this should be the one sentence, not three sentences. Uh, uh, Quality by comma. Yes. Instead possible. of period. Oh, you're getting me on structure. Ooh, be careful. I might get angry. Um. Yeah, I would not necessarily use a comma. I would, if I'm going to link it, I would probably use a semicolon. However, the problem is 
there's no conjunction. I would need to add a conjunction. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's because there was no conjunction, I didn't use a comma or a semicolon. But yeah, good job. You're right. It is ABC. They might use, uh, do you know bullet points? I don't even know how to make a bullet point. Does anybody know how to make a bullet point in Microsoft? <laughs> Sometimes they'll put, I'll, I'll just make, I'll just draw a bullet point. If you guys know Microsoft below reference, <laughs> thanks Richard. <laughs> I'll just do this. Uh, so it might actually be pop, pop, pop. That might be a way too. Good job, Francisco. Be careful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This is one thing when you join DDM, nobody thinks about learning punctuation, but after several months, people really start to improve their punctuation. I am not a punctuation genius, but I do try to make my punctuation easy for native speakers. So following me is a pretty good idea, and I have many punctuation books out there too. Below reference. Ah, duh, it's right here. Thanks, Richard. I see it. My God. Look at that, Rich. Richard, you're a genius. <laughs> I feel so embarrassed. You guys, we are done. Thank you very much for joining me. Our next DDM Live is next year for me. Now, Arthur, Clive, Matt, Miguel, they may have more classes. I think they do have more classes. I think especially Clive will be continuing classes. So he might have some review classes too. So if you have a question about their schedule, you can leave a message on Box or you can send them an email. Probably leaving a message on Box is better. That way everybody else can see. Um, but for me, I am done. I do have an Action English uh, class next Wednesday, but that is it. So you, for uh, lessons, I will give you a lesson on Monday, and I will give you a lesson on Thursday for DDM. Uh, but for me, uh, live classes are done until January 11th, something like that. Uh, that's when I start again. Don't worry. Before January, I will send you uh, the schedule, my schedule uh, for sure. Muhammad, thank you very much. Merry Christmas and happy birthday. Yeah, baby. I'm getting old. Uh, but yeah, that is it. So happy new year. Uh, I have no Russian students, so I don't need to worry about them. Uh, I think Muhammad's birthday is coming up sometime soon. Uh, Merry Christmas, if you celebrate Christmas. Uh, I don't think I have any Jews, so no Hanukkah. Uh, if I do, happy Hanukkah. Uh, and I don't know what else. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Happy New Year. Thank you, Coach. Thank, Thank you so you much, Coach. Bye, Thank everybody. You. Merry Christmas. Uh, yeah. Happy Merry birthday. birthday. Thank you. Donna, Richard, and Jonathan, stick around. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care, Everton. Take care. See you, Mohammed. <laughs>